Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on 4th of July Eve. He is Jason Shepard. I am Spencer Linton hanging out in Studio B, and we open up the conversation over Zoom to include Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, dual threat analyst, national champion quarterback, and a man who I am sure at some point in his football career, and maybe even when he goes to the gym, is still wearing the mesh cutoff that shows your stomach. Right, Blaine? Not at the gym anymore because <laughs> because my eight pack is a one pack. Um, <laughs> I had a friend that, that was actually seeing, like, not double, but seeing quad yet, and he's got it fixed. Um, but he came over to me, and we were at the pool, and I'm like, hey, with your vision right now, do I actually have a four-pack instead of a one-pack? <laughs> he said, well, let's just, let's just say that I do. And I was like, okay, great. So that's the last four-pack I'll ever have. <laughs> great stuff. All right, after that glorious insight uh, into your four-pack, we do need to talk BYU football, specifically – with the Big 12 preseason poll. I like number 13, Blaine, maybe because it's congruent and has some parallels with where BYU basketball was picked to finish at number 13, then we watched them do something magical. And so, I don't know, I got my blue goggles on perhaps, but I like the number 13 because there's a lot of room to move up for the Cougars. And all they've heard for the past two months is how not good they're going to be. So what do you think of number 13? I actually like it. And you want to know what? I think Kalani likes it. He, he has been relishing this offseason, kind of being underrated, and, and nobody's giving them any credit for, I don't, and, and maybe it's not credit, but credit for the folks that are coming back that were brand new in on the team last year. You had seven starters to start the season on offense that were in their first year in this offense, transfers in, and, and most of those guys are back. So I, I just feel like the offense is going to take a giant step forward, and especially if they can be settled at quarterback, but nobody's kind of looking at that and going, okay, what about all these guys that were new? Now, you, you contrast that on the defensive side. Defense was pretty solid for most of the year. I thought they were good enough to win a couple more games and get to a bowl game. And it was a brand-new defense, first-year defense. So everybody on the defense was in their first year in that system. And both on the offense and the defense, when they started spring ball, they picked up where they left off. And now they've advanced that. They're going to come into fall camp where with player run practices, the players that are running practice know what they're doing. Th there's... They're not enough talk about that. We see it because we're inside and we see it. But from the outside, they're just looking at what BYU did last year. They don't see this huge influx, although there are some good new players. So they're not giving enough credit. I think Kalani loves it. I think the players love that Vegas is picking them to win 4.5 games. Um, I just was with Keelan Marion and with uh, and with Hinkley Ropati on Monday night. And just to talk to them kind of offline, they, they have a chip right now. And they're kind of liking it. And they're kind of preparing with a chip on their shoulder. So I'm, I'm all about, I love 13. And I think Kalani would love to just roll right into the season under the radar and surprise a bunch of people. Anything else stand out to you, Blaine? Utah picked to, to win the conference, Kansas State second, uh, Oklahoma State third. Do, do, you, do you agree with the top three? Anything else stand out? Yeah, I, I think in Kansas is fourth, which th those would be my first four. The thing that stood out to me was, and this, keep in mind this is a media poll, but how close that first three were. You think about seven total vo votes and one first place vote is what separates Utah at one and Kansas State at two, which I think is fair. Um, it, you know, if Cam Rising is 100% healthy and can run around and make plays and, and Keithy is also he uh, healthy, you know they're going to be good on defense. So they deserve to be up there in the top four. We'll see. It's a brand new league. One, one of the things that, that people discount is that there's four new teams in the league and for the most part, the teams in the league have to play maybe two of them. So you've got to prepare for two teams that you haven't played, two brand new scouting reports, two teams you're not familiar with. Utah needs to prepare for like nine that they're not familiar with. It's it's an interesting task for these new teams to have to deal with um, in this in this first season. Maybe it's eight because they play more of the teams in the West, but that that makes it a, a tough road. And it's a very different league. It's a way more physical league. Than, than the Pac-12 is. Maybe it doesn't have as many skilled players, but way more physical. And Utah's hung their hat on physicality. I think of teams like, like West Virginia. West Virginia is seventh. West Virginia, to me, with Green at quarterback and his dual threat, and then, then White, Jaheim Wright is the, is the fast guy, and Donaldson at running back, the big physical guy. West Virginia is a team that I think may slip up into that top four that's down at number seven. Maybe they're not getting enough respect. So, Looking through the poll tells me exactly what I was thinking going in. It's anybody's game. 
There's a number of teams that can win it. And even some of the teams down toward the bottom may surprise people and jump up toward the top. And I think BYU could be one of those. Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Strength of schedule is an interesting topic, Blaine, because the differences in a 16-team conference when you have a matrix between the toughest and the easiest, per se, is pretty stark. Like, it, yeah. is, it is a big chasm. Notably, BYU, let's compare them to the, the team that's picked to win it, Utah. According to metrics, BYU's schedule is 33 spots harder. So 66 toughest in conference, Utah 99. How do you feel about the matrix? Does that bother you? Or are you just like, you know what, a 16-team conference is part of the deal? That That's what happens. And, you know, Utah, um, their first Pac-12 championship, like they, they've had some pretty favorable schedules. And I think about who they play at home and who they play away. The one thing I'll say about BYU, they're playing quality teams, especially in the crossover. What what raises BYU's schedule, too, when you look at it overall, is the preseason schedule. SMU's no joke, guys. Wyoming on the road is, like, SMU's formidable in, in, in preseason, and, and Wyoming on the road is not an easy place to go play. So that's why I think there's a lot of pessimism around BYU in that 4.5 because people are thinking, hey, if you're a Big 12 team, you should schedule three teams you can just easily handle in your first three games, which most have, Right. Um, and, and you just get three wins out of the gate. Nobody's saying that for BYU right now. That's one of the reasons their schedule is as tough as it is. But but that's, be, that's being in a big league. Like sometimes it's going to be a little easier. Sometimes it's going to be a little tougher. I will say this. I like the teams that I think BYU pay, plays the toughest matchups for them when I look at matchups at home. Most of them, yeah. And the matchups where they're better on the road. And, and so to me... I think the schedule is maybe not quite as tough as we think because of matchups and where they play against those matchups. Now, Utah's a tough matchup and they're on the road. But outside of that, I really like who they play at home and who they play on the road. Tyler Batty was BYU's lone representative on the uh, the All Big 12 team that was also released yesterday. Did that surprise you at all? And what are your expectations for, for Batty? I, I think we all have uh, high expectations for what he can do. We certainly know what the talent is. Yeah, and I, and I like him. He's one of these guys I'm like second year in this defense where he has a better understanding. And it's not just the players having a better understanding of what's expected in this new scheme. It's the coaching staff. It's Jay Hill going, okay, now I've done a whole offseason of self-scout and I've been through spring ball. I understand the individual talents of the guys that we have. Um, and now I can tailor this defense a little bit. Uh, to fit that talent. I think that you're going to see Tyler Batty be even better than he was last year. He's certainly crazy fit right now. I've seen him in the gym, not quite like Shep, but close. And just a little bigger than Shep, but not ripped like Shep. He's right? a guy who so can wear the cutoff mesh. He could wear it as big as he is, right? And I think there's some key people that, that before it's all said and done, have a chance to be, you know, on that all-conference team. It doesn't surprise me that Tyler's the only one on there right now because there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, but what about Jacob Robinson? He's as good as anybody in the league at corner. Like, Jacob could step up. Newcomer Jack Kelly, he could compete for Newcomer of the Year, and he could end up being a first-team All-Big 12 guy before it's all said and done. Yeah, and what about Connor Pay? Connor Pay could find himself, as this offensive line is better and the offense is more productive, he could find himself on a first team, you know, before it's all said and done. So there's there's some other players that I think we watch that could step up, and if BYU has success, there's, there's more than just Tyler Batty on that team. But... Uh, you know, I, I think Kelly and I've been saying this for a long time. He's a guy to watch. He's a guy that's a, I think he's a first team all big 12 talent. And I think he's going to thrive in this defense because more than anyone on this team, he's played in this defense. Mm. So, so watch for him. He may be an all big 12 guy. You just answered my next question. So I don't even have to ask it, which is which guy not named Tyler Batty could end up on one of these postseason all big 12 teams. You gave us some great answers. Jack Kelly, can't wait to watch him play. Blaine, great to catch up with you, my friend. Happy early 4th of July. Enjoy the holiday. I hope it involves a barbecue, lots of uh, protein to work on that four-pack, and just uh, some good family time, man. It's going to be all that, and then Stadium of Fire. we got to go support our boy Dave McCann. Yes, we do. I'll be yes. there. Jonas, bro. Listen, my bank account's feeling it, brother. Uh, yes, for the, too, for the Jonas Brothers. We're all, go we're all going, and then... And then sometime in the next week, you and I are getting some golf in. Spencer, Let's go. So there you go. Let's do it. Blaine, great Thanks, talking Blaine. to you, man. Appreciate it. See you guys.